Hi and welcome to this Thin Air episode. We're gonna make a simple uh, sailplane in the Microsoft uh, SDK for the Flight Simulator 2020. So I scanned the internet for a little bit about for some sailplane models, but I couldn't find one that was free. It was always a catch if you wanted to download them. You had to, you know, log in, blah, 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 blah. So I made one myself instead. And it's not very fancy. And the idea is not the, to have the plane. I mean, I can make this plane much fancier in the future. Uh, so the first step is to just get this model in to the simulator and then we can fiddling around with all the Elyrians and the elevators and, and you know the textures and the you know materials and so on. I guess this plane will be completely white when it comes into the simulator, uh, but that doesn't really matter. So before we start any kind of these projects, what we need to do is that we need to go to the folder where you have the SDK. You need to go into the samples directory and you need to copy the simple aircraft folder to your own project folder. So I tell that to you again, never start the projects directly here from the samples folders. Always copy them to your own project folder. Because if you mess up uh, these folders here or any files inside, you have no point of return. Uh, if you have done so. So we have made a copy. It's called Simple Aircraft and I already made one here. It's exactly the same but I just renamed it to ISV28 the Glider Project. So I will delete this one again. So this is a copy of the Simple Aircraft folder and this one can be compiled as is and we will get that propeller plane that we have seen before. So let's go in. Let's go into the simulator, and I'll show you how to compile this. So here we are now in the simulator, and you can actually build or compile the the project before you start flying or enter the world map. But I usually enter the world map first. The sun is setting here in Sweden, as you can see here, it's getting really dark. We haven't seen any sunlight for ages. I uh, haven't seen the sun for a couple of weeks now, actually. So I will take an airport. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you take. And it doesn't really matter which uh, runway you take either for that part. But you select one and I select a simple, very simple airplane uh, to load up. Uh, like the Cessna 152 because it won't take too much time to, to load up the simulator using that instead of the let's say A320 or something like that. So what we will do now is that we will um, um, build this project. Uh, by building the project uh, the packages uh, that comes out from the build will be available for the simulator and then we can load in the airplane into the game. So we will go and open project and you will need to navigate to your folder where you have the project stored now at which we call the ASDW28 glider project and here is the simple aircraft project and the name here can stay as is it doesn't really matter. So let's open this one I'll show you what happens in the first steps. Like that. As you can see now, the project consists of uh, marketplace data and, and the sim object, this is the aircraft. And you can see that we can't load the aircraft into the editor, which means that either there is nothing wrong or that we have not built yet the aircraft. You can also go into the window aircraft selector. And if you scroll through here, you will only find Asobo planes here, which means your plane is not yet available for the game. So what we will do is that you select the blue text and you press build packages. This then will take some time uh, to build. Uh, you can always press the, uh, I forgot to bring up that window, but I will show it, it will usually pop up by itself the console window that will report any errors during the build and 
that there should be no arrows in the sample plane. Let's see what comes up. Yeah, there you see the console coming up. And there is a lot of text there, but what is interesting is the red ones. And there is always some red lines there. For instance, this is for the A320 Neo Wizz Air. Something wrong with that one. In this case, it has nothing to do with our aircraft that we are building. So many of these errors could be something else. It's a good uh, practice to clear the errors before you make a build and you know that the errors you see is mostly yours. So do we see the airplane now then here? simple aircraft yes we have it now and we can load it into the simulator and this is the simple aircraft that is uh, provided by Asobo and it's actually a quite nice little plane and if you want it you can keep it as it is it doesn't have any uh, instruments in the cockpit though so that could be a project uh, to get that going but I think that is quite difficult actually but anyway so this plane is fully flyable and so on uh, and uh, there is actually in this set we can go in here and have a look loading the editor you can see that there is actually three of these and the the thing is that they are usually if you look here there are this is for air traffic this is for air traffic and this is the user selectable and they actually have some little bit different uh, liveries also on them as they are uh, but we can't uh, really well we could make them all uh, as user selectable if we wanted to i've never done that before actually let's go say save and resync and what happens if we get three of them down in the aircraft list aircraft selector list then we should be able to see that they are a little bit different uh, let me see here, window, anchor selector, let's just open that again, if we get anything new there. No, nope, we only have one. Should be there, maybe we need to close the project and then we need to open it again. And maybe we need to build it again uh, to see these planes plop up as they should be, because we have now made changes in some files. So I think that could be the case. Well, I will try that because it could be interesting to find out. So let's have a check. Let's do a build uh, to see what happens. I did forget to press the console key again here to see what happens in the console. Let me see it anyway. And as normally there is some red and, black and orange text. Uh, these are the 320 and these are some errors for the animations uh, for this actual model but we don't bother about them at the moment now we have at least three planes we can load in one that is completely white that is a little bit different as you see then we have the third one as we have seen before I actually like the green one okay the cockpit looks the same for these planes, uh, so there's some the difference there. <coughs> okay, so I talked about the glider. I would like to replace this plane with the glider model instead. Uh, so what I think we could try to do is to get rid of all these planes because I would not actually want to have three of them, but I'm not sure exactly how you can. Let's see that the first one was the white one. We don't want it at all. We could cross it away. Number one is the green one, and then number one is the one I don't like too much. Save and resync. Uh, you should know that the editor here, everything you do in the editor, well, almost everything you can do in the editor, what I know of, will be stored under the packets sources so how this thing then works uh, this is the project xml file and you should really download notepad plus plus because then you can open these files quite easily to see what's in them so this refers to a packet definitions which are here 
and in this packet definition file which is named you can see what are the components that should be built so we have the marketplace data and we have the simple aircraft and it's actually exactly the same things we see here marketplace data and the aircraft so usually these XML files do uh, uh, they they actually are exactly what you see uh, in the editor so if you're working with the weight and balance and blah 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 in the editor I'm pretty sure there is a file for that also somewhere here. If you go to package sources, sim objects, airplanes, my company, simple aircraft, you'll find all these files down here. And usually there are some settings in these files that, uh, uh, that are set through the editor. In this particular file, there is a title here. This title is uh, something that pops up down here. So this one should really, if you play around uh, with many of these simple aircrafts, you will get an arrow eventually saying that uh, there is a similar title already in use. So, uh, so it's a good idea maybe to change that. Sail plane instead and then we save the file just by uh, changing in a file saving in it uh, or making a resync over here doesn't usually affect directly on the model the resync uh, say resync does that actually in in some cases but if you change any of these files uh, no changes are done and uh, actually it works like this also that um, if you reload the plane there is no changes because what you reload is what was built so you need to go through the whole build procedure one more time uh, to reload everything up uh, completely okay so that should be done I mean let's we have not changed anything in the projects we will close that down and then we will see how do we get this model now of the sailplane instead in there. So I made the sailplane in scale, so it should be 18 meters roughly across uh, the wing. So it's one meter per uh, square here that you see here. So this should be roughly right size, right scale. What we will do is that I will just delete the camera here because we don't want to export that one and not need the light. So I will select all and I will go file, export and then you need to download something called uh, the MSFS toolkit for Blender. As I told you previously I have no intention to show you exactly how Blender works because that will just take too long time. So I have my projects here, I have the glider, I have the package sources, the sources are all the source files for the project. Once you do the build, uh, they will end up in the packages. The packet int is or packet internal or something like that. That's like just a, uh, that's just a, uh, what they call now, temporary uh, file uh, uh, folder. So that one you can always delete if you want to do that. Nothing will happen. But let's say that you were satisfied with the plane that we saw previously here on the on the on the on the runway, and you want to keep it in your in your game as is, then you will need to take a copy of this folder and copy it into your. Let me see here. Where do I have it? Let me go this way instead. So if you go into the community folder, which you should uh, locate. And, and there, you just take those package files and you copy it into the community folder. Then, next time you restart the game, you will find your simple aircraft in the game selectable as is without doing any building on blah 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 and so on. So, that's how it works. Now, we want to save this model and the models are stored in a folder called model and you will see that there is uh, various uh, LODs here level of distance 
So I'm only I will only replace the LOD zero here with it, with my plane. I don't have any textures uh, because I haven't done any textures uh, for my sailplane. But I will anyway put in the path for the textures in there. I will. Uh, I don't need to generate an XML file for airplane. Don't do that. Uh, selected objects. Uh, ba, 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 apply modifiers. That's usually what you need to click in uh, to get it working. So if you look on the folder here, uh, if you go into your uh, one up, let me see where I have my projects, the glider, package sources, same object, airplanes, my company, model. So if you want to store the textures, you need to go one step up and you need to go into the texture folder where we have the textures for the simple aircraft. So this dot dot means one step up and then into the folder texture. It's quite uh, simple if you know it. So now I will replace the LOD0, LOD00, uh, with my own model uh, from Blender, which is done now. So now this plane model is exported uh, to that directory. And if we now go and open this project, simple aircraft project, which is the glider. Uh, it's really easy to be confused after a while. You open it up. And you can see that the plane still has, hasn't has changed. It's still the propeller plane that we see here. You see, it downloaded the pro pro propeller plane. So why did it load the propeller plane? Well, these files that you have built are somehow uh, incorporated into the virtual file system that exists in the in the in the game. So they haven't been like uh, they are like mounted to the game now. So you, you need to uh, unmount these files uh, before you can mount in the new model. So what we need to do now is that we need to build the new model. It, which will mount these new uh, packet files uh, to the simulator uh, immediately. So what you can see here now is that the model did change directly. So now we actually have a sailplane there and the colors actually came across. That, that was fantastic. I didn't believe that. So the next step would now be uh, to because if we reload this plane once more, you can hear that it has an engine. And if you go ahead and fly this plane, it will fly exactly as the propeller plane did that we had here. So there is no changes uh, to the aircraft, even though you change the model. So let me bring this up in the air. Let's see, let's see. get some speed first. Bring it up into the air. This is, this is the first time ever I see a glider in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But it still flies uh, like that propeller plane, so there is no difference Bravo there. Alpha, Foxtrot, Mike, type one and the cockpit West camera, we have to move a little bit. But otherwise, it, it works exactly like the, like the propeller plane. So it doesn't fly worse, it doesn't fly better than the propeller plane that we had. So to change the flight characteristics of this one, we would need to start working with the editor to change that to become a, a gliderish plane. I'm not sure if uh, Asobo actually supports gliders yet in the simulator. Microsoft uh, uh, so I think there is an option to change this to become a glider in the editor we can try that to see what happens but then we have no way of, uh, of launching the aircraft so we would need to launch it uh, on a custom place on the world map uh, because then it will be launched in the air so that could be like a way to start the plane so the brakes are still working. 
that is as is. Let me turn the plane so we have the sun in the back instead. So this is like a well, some of these airplanes actually have a motor, so they could be used like as is. But if we go in now into the editor, uh, we could start fiddling around with the wake. This plane is much, much, much lighter than the propeller plane, I guess. Maybe not so much, actually. But, for instance, the geometry, that will affect mostly how the plane flies, actually, in the simulator. As you can see, uh, these green bastards, as I call them, these green dots, the measurement points, are still uh, after the old plane uh, so that uh, the, the propeller plane that we had so we would need to to, to change that somehow uh, we can change the cockpit first the cockpit is, is not 26 feet long anymore let's say it's 20 feet instead let's go file save and resync and then, then the camera will switch and you will get uh, super annoyed after a while because now I want to see the plane from the side I have to click here I have to then start fiddling around is that correct I will try something develop a camera let's see if that one stays as is I haven't actually tried that yet maybe it's easy to use the develop a camera here and see what happens now it's actually the size is correct and the position is actually correct so but it could be a little bit longer maybe so let's go into the fuselage and make it uh, 22 feet instead. Let's do a file, save and resync and see what happens with the camera, if it stays or moves. If it moves... Uh oh! It stayed! Great! That, that was good. Uh, so that can be used then uh, to... No, I lost the control over this. Yeah, I can't move around it. Ah, oh, sorry, it's the old key. Sorry, when you are in the <laughs> when you are in the de developer camera, and you always need to press the old key before you move anything. If otherwise, it won't move the 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 camera around. So twenty, it could be a little bit less actually. Twenty one, let's say twenty one. And the diameter is not four point two feet. It's maybe. Let's say two feet, half of it at least. File, save, and resync. Let's see how it looks. So this tube, the fuselage, fuselage tube that we are playing around now, is a whole thing that uh, now affects how the uh, how the um, how this airplane fly flies in the air regarding the fuselage could be actually less than that 1.6 uh, maybe and this is maybe the radius not the diameter let me put it like that and see what happens and uh, it takes some time and each time it takes a small jump so soon we will be at the end of the runway but that's another problem okay next thing is to play with the wings they are roughly right uh, in the in the dim one dimension but the uh, span must go up uh, it's 18 meter how much that in feet oh it should be three times something Three times 18 roughly. I just did a quick one to get close. I use my calculator here. Um, uh, 18, 18, 18, 18. It's not time. 18 uh, meters and then times three. Let me check. 54 maybe. So put in 50. Let's see what happen happens. File, save, and resync. I can use uh, just a web page to make the translation. Between feeds, and this is also very, very, very annoying that you can't use meters in the uh, in the in the simulator. Ah, it was actually 54, 55 maybe. Sounds like like a neat number. Save and resync. Ah, we 
could be a little bit bigger actually but now we might have a come into the uh, green dot barrier or what we should call it because it's also that you have here the area of the wing now when I made the wing uh, span longer it probably went much thinner the cord went much thinner because it has to span out this uh, this uh, uh, whole area now on, on this uh, longer uh, wingspan so maybe it's actually up to 60 feet it could be even nicer number let's try that I'm just doing this with my head now so I'm, I could use the data from a real aircraft of course but this is for showing off okay the size of the wing seems to be correct now we need to move the wing up a lot so where do we have the position longitude vertical maybe that one so now it's minus 2.7 feet below the datum point of the aircraft so this is usually uh, in the center of the plane I can show you where that is actually exactly but let's t let's uh, go ahead did you see that let's go ahead and move that upwards position vertical 2.7 let me put to two feet positive instead same in resync and let's see if the if the dots jump up or down or what they do or backwards they did jump up so that was the correct the correct but too much so it should be maybe one feet save and resync as you can understand this takes some time it's not something that you can just use a gizmo to move them around which is a shame because some things you can actually move around with a gizmo which is much better than uh, fiddling around like that we need to go down even more so it's not uh, not even one so maybe it's uh, zero point seven ish see what happens with the green small dots uh, so these dots are used for calculating how the plane flies now they seem to be roughly here if you look in the fuselage they seem to be roughly within but on the end you can see that they are getting out too much that means that we have the dihadral is maybe a little bit uh, too much in the degrees so maybe it should be only uh, five degrees the hydro save and resync so now this should move down hopefully if you have zero degrees the hydro that, that means the wings are completely straight uh, so it's not even that maybe it's 4.5 save and resync again so we are at the end of the runway uh, getting close getting close so it's the dihedral should be four degrees which I could find out from the data blade of course for the data sheet for the aircraft <coughs> if you are intending to make a real plane that will should be exactly as the real one then you should of course use the data data sheets to find out all these numbers for the plane let's have a look from up above what does it look like then did you see that when we went a further away from the plane it did load up the propeller plane <laughs> LOD number two when we get a little bit closer we get the LOD zero one. Oh, well it's nice to see that it works we can remove the LODs a little bit later the cord is maybe a little bit too big so it should be maybe something like six or five uh, feet uh, let's go five directly uh, and let's save that save and resync to make the wings thinner see what happens yes now they are more finished they are more like thin air now 
the wing should move actually a little bit forward as you can see uh, looking from the top view at least it looks like the wing is a little bit too far behind so we need to move it not in the vertical position but we need to need it in the longitudinal position here so minus two uh, from the datum point uh, maybe this is more than that or less it should come forward so let's put uh, minus uh, 1.8 again those feet let's see what happened now they should move forward a little bit or was it backwards I uh, can't really tell what happened it was a little bit too little let me see here where do we have that and it is minus one File save and resync. Let's see what happens. The datum point, which is the origin for the aircraft, which is not the uh, not really much happened there. Let's keep that as is. Uh, let's go to the uh, elevator. You can see that the elevator is just too far behind now uh, compared to the sailplane model. So we need, need to move that one. Uh, winglets we could put in here blah 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 we, this plane does actually have winglets so that we could be put in but let's keep that as it horizontal uh, tail I think the area looks pretty close to what we have 20 it could be a little bit less uh, but and the span looks almost also correct let's keep the span as is but we need to move it in in the in the uh, longitudinal uh, so it should be minus minus 15 maybe let's see if the dots move around in which direction yep now we have them roughly where the elevator is on the real plane it should be a little bit more actually 15 point three and we could make it so and let's save it up ah, I'm happy with that now we need to move the uh, the rudder to the vertical tail into the right position uh, so it's instead of 4.7 it should be maybe just four save and resync and let's move it in this direction first uh, it is easy to get old watching this uh, it, uh, I mean it takes quite a long time I think it should go more than that because the the, ele the rudder actually or not the rudder but the vertical tail starts actually a lot to more before that so maybe minus 15 or 16 15 save that same in the sink where we get the dots okay that looks quite okay let's have a look on the side view because we have only aligned this uh, in one direction so far for instance the uh, elevator needs to come down a lot as you can see or up sorry the elevator is uh, the elevator dots are where they are they need to come up here yeah. the uh, the the vertical tail I would say is okay here for that part let's keep it as it is let's go and move the horizontal tail upwards uh, in the vertical here so it needs to go up uh, quite a lot uh, to get those green dots to line up vertical position 1.2 it should be like 4 maybe let's save and resync 
And again, all these um, uh, numbers and figures that you put in here now can be found in those files that we see. Okay, so now we have sort of uh, uh, nailed that bomb, that part. Uh, thickness ratio could be much smaller than this for this kind of plane, of course. But now the plane, let's have a look on and wait. We should, uh, of course, remove everything that's not passenger right. Do we have him? No, let's remove him. Passenger left, no. Baggage, no. No, no, no co pilot. And we have a gizmo here. Fantastically enough, we have a gizmo for the pilots, which should be somewhere. Let's say there is the pilot. Good. File, say, resync. I'm not sure if it is a good practice to move around a lot of numbers and, and then change the. Uh, See if that moved or not. Well, it, that did move. Uh, the red box we see here is the engine. Uh, so that that's not the pilot himself. Uh, so that's the, the the engine, and that we could we we will let's keep the engine so we can get easily up into the air. But let's lower it down a little bit so it's not uh, the position of the plane. Let's take it uh, down. Both things moved. Okay, now let's put it a little bit in, inside the airplane. So now that one should be r roughly there. We will of course remove uh, the uh, engine once we can start terminaling. If that's possible in the flight simulator or not. Okay. So let's close the editor. Now we have a plane that is actually uses uh, the long span, it uses the long wings, it uses everything like that. Uh, so now it should fly a bit differently compared to what we had before. So get this plane going. You need to re reload it to get the motor up and running. Let's put it up in the air. Let's see what oh, see what happens. I'm not sure that the flaps are doing anything here and that in this if you have the flaps you know, usually you know that the plane is starting with the flaps well the yeah the way it moves is now different to what it was before so the plane actually flies differently compared to previously Let's turn off and see what happens. If I just let go of the stick, I think it's a little bit front heavy. So we would need to change the weights and the, and the zero. The TG of the plane. The stalling uh, beep that you can hear here uh, comes from the data for the uh, uh, for the propeller plane, so you shouldn't mix that up with anything from the from the aircraft that we see on screen now. Well, otherwise, uh, from uh, being a bit nose heavy, it flies a glide leash. I would say I would need to increase maybe the, uh, the area for the uh, Elarians uh, to make them work a little bit better and we need to also to animate them so that they actually move when I move the airplane and uh, there should be not be too much thermals around going on here uh, because I don't think there are I don't think there are any problems in this simulator actually. They will of course be made up somehow. Let's see if I can land this plane. Or not. Oh, 
Okay. And the gear is still there, even though we don't see it. So that needs to be fixed also. So it actually doesn't have a tricycle landing gear. That's the normal Asobo brakes, nothing else. So that was uh, just how simple in fact it is uh, to create your own plane. The looks of it has nothing to do with how it flies. Uh, sorry to say that again. And then you need to do the magic inside the editor. In, in this case this plane should be much lighter. We should go and need to move the uh, gizmo for the zero point uh, weight here. That's roughly actually quite right, I think. Maybe a little bit forward. Maybe somewhere there. Uh, that will affect how the plane flies, I hope. We don't need any tanks. Uh, we don't need any gears. The gears you will find under the contact points, the brakes. And these are quite easily actually to move around so you can just this is the front gear, for instance, so you can just easily move it to where a contact point should be underneath the plane. This is now a gearish contact point, remember that. And then we have uh, the other ones that are for the, uh, the left and right landing gear. Let's see if we can put them a little bit as they should be. Just if you put them under the wing, it doesn't work. I think the plane will be on its side. Uh, so we need to put them somewhere else. This will of course be removed once um, once we make it a true airplane. As you saw, even though I mo moved the gizmo, the box is little move. I need to make a save and a resync again to get the boxes to move. Oh, it leaned actually over. Okay. That can be fixed. We have another contact points. Now, for instance, this compact contact point here is now looking for any contact with the uh, ground. If I can get out of this crazy mouse function here. Up to the scale to move. Ah, come on. Change that one. Then I want not to rotate here. This, is, this should be at the end of the wing, for instance. That is a contact point in this case. And it should go up like that. And then we have the next contact point here. Let's move that around a little bit to the end of the wing. Too much. Let's move it back. And then we need to move it uh, slightly up. Contact point 5 is uh, at, the, at the rear. We should, it should be like somewhere underneath the plane there. Contact point 6. Gizmo is there. Should be the nose. Contacting something. Contact point 7 is under the plane uh, which is sort of the act like the uh, gear but not contact point seven is high up on the wing so if that touches anything contact point nine is low on the fuselage at the rear save and the sink and now these points should be a little bit better as they should as we move them still lying around a little bit let's see can we start now or not uh, i think we still can get the plane going if you release the brakes ah uh, some contact point ah uh, a little bit tough okay Messed something up. So I need to move the contact points for the wheels a little bit more into the right position. Okay, as you understand, now it's a matter of uh, 
fiddle around with the editor and all these numbers that you put in here will end up uh, in those files that you find under the the uh, mod here these these files all the changes you made will be in these files and uh, if you do file save and resync it affects the plane uh, so that you can try it again directly in the game but if you make a change to the model you always need to go and rebuild uh, the complete uh, project before you see any changes on the model as you saw we had uh, uh, quite many LODs when we went farther away from the plane see that the propeller plane comes back up there uh, to get rid of those uh, we need to go into the files here under the model uh, on the simple aircraft XML and use delete the other LODs that you see there and then you save and now the only LOD will be this one that we see here this means also that you can remove these files you can delete them because they won't be read anymore so now if we do a, a, a build package of this you will find out that um, there is only one LOD left let's see what happens okay now it's done Let's close some windows. There is a real little windows. You would really need a second screen to play around with this. Now we go further away. There is only one plane, as you can see. So that could be a good way to start off with, because otherwise you would need to, as I told you, you would need to model uh, the various LODs and decrease the number of uh, complexity on the airplane, the number of vertices in your model so it will be faster uh, to render uh, even though it's uh, very very far away then you could have like thousands of them flying in the sky on a distance but it will only be still used like 15 vertices per plane flying around or something like that okay i hope you enjoyed this tutorial how to make a glider in the msfs sdk and i will be back with some more material in the future thank you bye bye